Hey everyone, my name is Dylan Adams, and this is not the video I was planning on making today. Um, I was going to do something more focused on playing and different tunings for slide guitar, but um, making YouTube videos is hard, <laughs> I'm realizing. So today I'm just going to sit on the floor and talk about something a little bit easier, which is my guitars and gear, because I've gotten a lot of questions about it, and I'm a gear nerd just like all the rest of you guys. So here we go. things first we have to talk about this thing right here um, for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram um, this is a mule caster made by mule resonator guitars in Saginaw Michigan they are a small boutique company who specializes in steel bodied and brass bodied resonator guitars as well as steel bodied um, electric guitars which is what this is this is made of hollowed steel it's welded together and there's also a, a wood block that runs all the way through the middle of it that everything attaches to, but um, I've been a fan of theirs for a long time. Um, I've always wanted one of these, and one day, um, Matt Ike, the owner of Mule, who is just the sweetest, just most down-to-earth, just awesome guy, reached out to me. He had seen my Instagram videos, and he basically said, can I make you a guitar? And I was like, absolutely yes. <laughs> so they, uh, they built this thing for me, and I couldn't be more grateful. This guitar is so special. It is uh completely unique from anything else that i've ever played the the metal body obviously gives it a special kind of resonance that you can hear coming through the amp it kind of has an almost metallic sound to it especially um, with clean tones but more than that it just is so responsive to your right hand like more so than any guitar i've ever played honestly i mean it can go from just the most whisper quiet just pure pretty sounds to just absolutely barking just roaring gnarly sounds with just completely controlling your right hand um it almost doesn't matter where you set the volume knob on this thing it's you know it has just the full dynamic range it's almost like when you switch to another guitar like a normal wood body guitar it almost feels like you've turned a compressor on or something because this is just so um yeah just so responsive it has um they're called mule buckers. They're basically Gibson style mini humbuckers that mule uh, hand winds and they're just perfectly voiced for this guitar and this thing is just amazing. It has a beautiful roasted flame maple neck on the back. It just feels amazing. It plays incredible. I had them set it up for standard tuning and that's how I plan to keep it. Um, one day I would like to try the kind of short scale baritone thing that they do but I primarily am a standard tuning player and I want to be able to use this thing in pretty much any situation I normally would to be able to get this kind of this the special thing that this does into any other situation I'll be playing in and I'm so grateful for Matt and all the guys at Mule who put their heart and soul into making this thing for me and the way that they make these things they are perfectly playable without slide they're not slide guitars they sound great for slide but you can play pretty much anything you would normally play on this and that's a big thing that you know Matt is trying to kind of share with the world is that guitars like this and resonators are not just for slide they're for pretty much anything you want to do with them so anyway yeah this i haven't been able to put this thing down lately it's amazing i love it so these next two guitars are extremely important to me this is my 2013 gibson sg standard and this is my 2007 gibson les paul classic and these are the first two nice guitars that i really owned my first guitar hero when i was nine years old was angus young so from day one i always wanted an sg um and you know that continued through becoming a Dwayne Allman and Derek Trucks fan. So yeah, the SG is kind of like my first love when it comes to guitar. So in 2013, they came out with the new SG standard, which for all intents and purposes, this is a 61 reissue SG. Literally the only difference stock is it doesn't have the, uh, the kind of wider 60 style headstock, but in stock form, I mean, it had 57 classic pickups, small pick guard, um, 60 style neck, which this one is actually a little bit chunkier than some that you would find on a lot of SGs, but I love it. Um, and the bevels for the horns are correct because that's something, you know, for any SG fans out there will know that 
they're always changing the contours of the, you know, then like the bevels and stuff and the horns and for the whole guitar. And for this year alone, they were much closer to the original 60s ones than they have been before or since, you know, unless you get a 61 reissue or a custom shop or something. But this guitar goes back further than any of my others. And um, it means a lot to me. And my dad one day bought me... Um, a custom little nameplate with my name on it, and he just thought it was the coolest thing in the whole world. So uh, I've left that on there since then. It's kind of a nod to him. But it currently has Seymour Duncan Antiquity pickups, a Faber ABR bridge, because um, I'm a nerd about all the vintage accurate stuff. So a lightweight aluminum tailpiece. I can't remember exactly which pots are in it right now, but I know I've changed them out. I, uh, I think they're Mojo Tone um, Vintage Taper for these, and then regular CTS 500Ks for the tones. And yeah, that's my SG. So up next, my Les Paul Classic. As many of you know, my two ultimate guitar heroes have always been Dwayne Allman and Derek Trucks. So I had the SG covered, but I didn't have a Les Paul. So this is the first nice guitar I bought completely with my own money, which um, I will never sell this thing. I'll never sell that either. Um, and these two guitars were pretty much my main guitars for honestly up until last year. This one also is almost nothing original on it. <laughs> it came with those really horrible like overwound 498 and 500T or whatever pickups. Ceramic magnets just not good for at least for the kind of thing that I'm into. So I've swapped all kinds of different stuff into here. This is a Seymour Duncan Seth Lover. Um, and this is a Mojo Tone 59 clone humbucker. Again, Faber Bridge, lightweight aluminum tailpiece. The pots are um, RS Guitar Works Super Pots at the recommendation of Zach Broyles. Sadly, this thing hasn't gotten played too much lately since I got my Red Custom Shop and the Mule Caster, but it'll have its day. It'll have its day again. So this is another very special guitar for me. This is a 2019 Les Paul Jr that was once owned by my bandmate who passed away in 2020. His name was Denton Elkins. Once I got a hold of the guitar, I put a um, custom truss rod cover, kind of like on my SG, but with his name on it. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing, there's not much to say about this. It's just a Les Paul Jr. stock Gibson P90. I did change the magnets for Onico 4s because it, the Onico 5s are a little bit strident sounding for me so that warmed it up a, a decent bit but still has that kind of bite i bring it to pretty much every smokestack gig he didn't was in smokestack and he was one of the best musicians i've ever known he could play pretty much anything i mean he could he could do it all and was just a wonderful guy and i miss him every day so uh this is what i can remember him by this guitar ignited my love for single pickup just bare bones simple as it gets guitars and with smokestack at least with the kind of stuff that we play i can go an entire gig just using this guitar and just you know changing the volume and toad knobs on it and i never feel like i'm missing anything yeah i just love this thing in a lot of ways this is my favorite guitar just because of the you know sort of emotional connection i have with it and the way it makes me remember my you know friend and bandmate and it's just a badass guitar so this is my gibson custom shop r8 which means it's a 1958 reissue in a limited limited edition sweet cherry color they call it so for anyone who is a relatively recent follower of mine or subscriber this is probably the guitar you know me most for playing, um, but I have not had this very long. This is pretty new for me. I just got it in, I want to say, November of 2022. And as much as I've always loved my gold top, the ultimate goal was always to get a custom shop Les Paul. They just, they just have a different feel to them. If you're like me and you're a nerd about everything being really vintage accurate, then yeah, you'll pretty much never be satisfied until you get a custom shop or I mean a vintage one. But yeah, this thing is a really special instrument too. I mean, it's completely stock and I don't really feel the need to change anything on it. It's pretty much exactly how I want a Les Paul to feel and sound. Uh, the video that Rhett Scholl first saw of me and um, duetted on TikTok, I was playing this guitar and it's like really bright and out there. And I think, uh, yeah, I think this helped me stand out. So I kind of, I feel like I kind of partly owe my recent success online to this guitar. Hey everyone, Future Dylan here. Um, I'm currently working on editing the video and I just realized that um, I'm a slide guitar player and I didn't talk about the slides that I use. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, these are probably my three favorite ones that I use the most. Um, I have way too many slides. I've tried pretty much all of them and I think I've narrowed it down to these three is the ones that I like the most. Um, this is the one I've been using the most lately. 
It's the Ernie Ball Comfort Slide in a size small. Um, I like it because it has this rubber insert thing in it that uh, provides some nice grip for, uh, you know, which so it won't slide off at gigs and stuff like that. Um, it's pretty much the perfect size and weight for me. I like there to be a little bit of wiggle room inside the slide so I can kind of crook my finger in it like that to give it more control. And this one's just about right in terms of that. Um, I like slides to be uh, pretty light, but not too light. If they're too thin and light, then um, they tend to sound a little bit thin and lack sustain. But this is just about right for me. Um, it's black chrome plated brass and it's really durable. So, uh, so yeah, I've been using this one the most. This is, uh, the brand is called the Rock Slide and it is the Joey Landreth model. Um, one of these used to be my main slide for a long time. It was actually this um, nickel plated one, uh, but it started to feel a little bit too heavy to me. I couldn't maneuver it well enough um, or as well as I would like to. So I stopped using it, but I just came across this older one that I have and the older ones actually were a little bit thinner and a little bit lighter. And I was messing with it last night and I actually kind of dig it. So. I think I'm going to use this specific one for a while. I'm just going to bring this to a few gigs and um, see how it goes. Because, yeah, this one feels better to me than the newer, kind of a little bit thicker and heavier ones. Um, so, yeah, that's another good one. And then this is just a regular old Dunlop uh, model number 212 glass. Um, it is, you know, roughly the same size equivalent to these just in the, you know, in the glass. And... Um, I'm going to make a, a video about, you know, how to choose a slide and stuff like that in the future. But, um, for me, this might be a, a hot take, but the material that a slide is made of doesn't make as much difference in the tone as people say it does, in my opinion. Um, to me, the weight and density and thickness of whatever the material is, that makes the most difference to me. So, um, I use these for a while just because um, they're cheap and easy to come by and um, they're well made. They, they are, again, pretty much the perfect weight and size for me. But glass breaks and for me, they, it tends to get these little, I don't know if you can see it, sort of little sort of pock marks or like, I can kind of tell there. Basically, it just starts to get little chips out of the glass pretty quickly when I use it. So I've kind of moved away from using glass slides. And again, to me, all of these slides sound about the same, <laughs> especially if you're playing electric with any kind of overdrive. So um, anyway, those are my main slides. So on to amps. I am currently in a tweed phase of my life right now. Uh, my main amp used to be a deluxe reverb reissue, but for what I like to do, I have found that old school tweed circuits are just really what do it for me. Um, so I will talk about this in a sec, but these two, these two amps here are my main amps that I use for gigging. First one is my 5e3 Deluxe Clone, which this doesn't look like a tweed amp, but it is. So I built this myself, actually. Um, I went to the Gallup School of Luthery for their two-month journeyman program, which they're amazing, by the way. If you want to get into guitar building, then uh, I would highly recommend them. I, uh, had an amazing experience there, but one of their extracurricular classes is amp building, which I was very interested in. So this is what they have you build. It's just a stock Tweed Deluxe Circuit 112. The speaker that I have in this is a Mojo Tone BV30H, which is their Celestion G12H clone. I've had a few different speakers in it, but I've landed on this one. I think it is the absolute perfect speaker for this amp, at least if you're going for kind of cranked up rock and roll blues type tones. And the 5e3 is what really turned me on to tweed amps. So um, I wanted one that was a little bit louder and more powerful. And I found that I loved putting together kit amps. So this amp right here, I would say is my main amp. This is a 5f4 tweed super clone. So this is two tens and it's, they say around 30 watts, it's two 6L6s, but it's kind of a quiet 30 watts. I would say output wise, it's pretty equivalent to a deluxe reverb. So for an apartment, it's loud, but for gigging, it's just about right in most venues. This is a Mojo Tone kit that I ordered. Um, 
The two speakers that are in it are an Eminence GA10 SC64, it's the Alessandro model speakers, and a Celestian G10 Creamback. Originally, it just had two of the Eminence speakers in it, but I've been kind of drawn towards the Celestian sound lately. They just have a little bit punchier mids and cut through and makes a little bit better, I think. But I still wanted to have some of that American style vintage uh, Fender type tone. The common denominator with both of these amps is... I basically just plug straight into them and crank them up. I am not really a pedal guy. I will use overdrive pedals if I have to, but in an ideal world, I literally just use a Strymon Flint and a Polytune, and I just have them sitting on top of my amp, and that is my live rig. And uh, for both of these amps, I kind of treat them the same way in terms of how I actually use them. I just crank them to... When my volume knobs on my guitar are at their max, that is the loudest, most distorted solo tone that I'm looking for. And anything cleaner than that, I just roll back the volume knob of my guitar. If you're wondering how in the hell do you do that without being asked to turn down, so I typically will run a plexiglass baffle in front of the amps, and that goes a long way towards not being asked to turn down and not just overpowering the whole band, which is very important because as much as I'm looking for that crank tube amp tone, I really do not want to just be that guy that is just ridiculously loud, you know, that you can't hear anything else. It's just overpowering the whole mix. Like that's not what I'm looking for. I want my guitar to sound good and I want the sound guy to be happy as well. In the occasions where cranking a tube amp is just not reasonable, I will use a Weber Mini Mass attenuator. I haven't tried many other attenuators, but I would say this does a pretty good job of keeping a natural feel and sound while bringing the overall volume down. I don't find that I have to use this very often. It's pretty rare that I actually have to bring this to a gig and use it, but when I do have to, this works well. Now we will move on to my Super Reverb. So this is a 1971 Super Reverb. So yeah, I got this thing when I was at peak Derek Trucks fanboyism. <laughs> this has been blackface. This is probably the best clean tone I've ever heard in my life is from this amp right here. It has four of the Eminence GA10 SC64 speakers that I talked about, which I have one of in this amp too. In my opinion, if you're going for a clean American style tone that isn't too scooped in the mids and isn't too bright and harsh, these are the ultimate speaker. These things are freaking amazing. They sound absolutely incredible for cleans. They break up really nice as well. They're not harsh sounding. Um, they're just the vintage Fender sound, if you ask me. I don't bring this out to gigs too much, mainly because, like I said, I prefer to just go straight into amps and crank them. And this thing is just absurdly loud <laughs> if you do that um, for most of the places that we play. So... I pretty much only bring this out to larger outdoor gigs, and even then I don't just plug straight in and crank it. When I use this amp, it's the the rare time that I'll use an overdrive pedal, which I guess that's the perfect time to go into the pedals that I use. So if I use an overdrive pedal, like I said, it's pretty much only gonna be with this amp or a, you know, a clean uh, blackface fenders type amp. And my pedal board is literally, I would just plug a regular old Boss Blues driver. This is my first pedal that I ever owned. I got it when I was about 13, my trusty Polytune Mini, uh, and that's it, just sitting on top of the amp, and um, I pretty much, you know, if I have to use a pedal, I basically treat it the exact same way I would playing into a cranked tube amp, which again, I just set the gain as high as I will ever want it for, you know, the most highest gain sound that I'll need which usually isn't that much, you know, it's a pretty like medium, you know, kind of classic rock uh, level of gain and then just control it from my volume knob on my guitar and that's it. And again, I don't like stepping on stuff. <laughs> I like to keep it as simple as possible. A lot of people find these to be a little bit harsh, which if your tone knob is above noon, I would agree, but the secret with the blues driver to make it sound much warmer and more pleasing is turn that tone knob to nine o'clock or less. Um, sometimes I'll have it all the way off and it sounds great. But 
I would say it's pretty flat EQ wise, if not a little bit scooped in the mids, which can be a little bit too much mid scoopage going on with a, you know, black face fender type amp or silver face fender. So I reached out to Zach at Mythos Pedals recently, and he recommended that I get the Olympus Overdrive, which it has a little bit more of a mid pushed tweed type sound to it without being, it's not like a tube screamer where it's just like excessive mid, you know, huge mid hump, but uh, it's a subtle mid push and has a really natural, um, you know, everyone always says that tube like breakup. But for me, who is an absolute snob about that, this one really does do a great job. I've only gotten to bring it to one gig, but from here on out, this will probably be my one overdrive that I use if I have to use like a backline, you know, twin reverb or whatever. So 95% of the time at any gig, literally the only pedals that I use are these two pedals right here. The Strymon Flint, which I use for reverb, which is always on. I just do like the 60s setting, so it's the spring reverb. I just have it as an always on, just kind of in the background, ambience kind of thing. And I'll sometimes use the harmonic tremolo. There's a couple Instagram videos that I've made where I've used the harmonic tremolo, and there's maybe one or two songs that I'll use it for, uh, just for some kind of, you know, just a cool like modulation kind of effect. But yeah, this and then Polytune 2 Mini pretty much it <laughs> all right last but not least um for my home rig for most of the videos that i do where you hear um you know playing examples where i'm at home i typically use this this is a universal audio dream 65 amp simulator pedal out of all of the um you know amp simulations that i've tried this is probably the most realistic one. And you might ask, why don't, why didn't you get the Woodrow if you like tweet amp so much? Well, I did, and I don't know, something about it just didn't quite feel right. I mean, the maybe it's just the specific tweet deluxe that they modeled it after. It just didn't quite have the gain that I was looking for. It was a little too squishy sounding. Yeah, I, went, I ended up getting the dream, and this one is just working better for me. So yeah, for most of my you know playing at home, I will use either this or the Universal Audio um, 55 Tweed Deluxe plug-in, not the pedal, but the plug-in. The plug-in just feels a little bit more like my amp does than the pedal did, so um, so yeah, I'll use that for more Tweed type tones. Um, eventually, I, I would like to get some sort of load box, like a Captor X or something like that, or an Ox box, be able to plug my real amps in and record them that way. But yeah, for now, these are working great. And uh, yeah, I just keep it simple. I just plug my guitar right into this and then straight into my Universal Audio Apollo interface. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, I just like simplicity. Um, I don't run any other pedals into this or anything. I just kind of go straight in and play it. All right. I think that about does it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that gave you guys a little insight into the types of gear that I like to play and the stuff that you've been seeing me play in the videos. Like I said, simple is the name of the game for me. I like to just have nothing on the floor and just use these things. Yeah, hopefully my next video will be a little bit more playing focused and a little bit more of an instructional video with slide. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe and keep a lookout for more videos coming up soon. Peace.